The typical day in Mortal Kombat starts with me trying to get in as early as possible. Most of the other guys in the team work late into the night, and in the morning I can get a few uninterrupted hours to program in the characters' moves and plan things out for the rest of the day. Well, he takes his hat off, basically throws it, sticks in the other guy's face, and then he kind of staggers there for a little while, falls back on his back, plays there twitching, and Kung Lao comes there and he lifts his foot up, steps on the guy's stomach, the hat flies up, he grabs it, and goes into like a cool pose. Then, starting at about 9 or 10, most of the others start pouring in. And from that point on, the insanity begins. Hello, Steve. Hey. What's going on? Oh, that was cool. Wow, you did that all like last night or something? Uh, yeah. I like that. I, uh, I finished the show. Really cool. Whatever that is. I was trying to get the, uh, the whipping right. It looks cool when it goes back in his chest. Uh, my main role in the, in the, on the team is uh, background design. You have the very European Gothic uh, flying buttress and the very Asian uh, tower top. I made this single element, which I'm going to repeat. Right now you can see I've got textures on the model, but they're, they're merely placeholder textures. We got these hook swords. I don't know who's getting that, maybe in Movado. Just a regular staff. And they're all taped up, so when we capture, we get the good shot. The tonfa. The tonfa. The sai, of course, you gotta have the sai. The regular broadsword. There's more laying around everywhere else. So. Welcome to Vogelland, <laughs> where I'm doing Shang Tsung's fatality. I guess each time he hits, like, I think souls come out. <laughs> You know, and going to Shang Tsung each time, or each time they go up in the air. I'm not quite sure how it's going to work. I just know what I have to do animation-wise. And Ed's going to say, okay, now the souls come out, and now they don't. Can you show me right where she makes an impact? Where, where she gets like curve. Right here, you can stop. He doesn't he, you even need him to do anything. Just not, <laughs> don't even have him do any impact. This, I, if you can hand animate so she, you know, the impact propels her away. It's like a like that, or, or we could do it in the game. Cyrex is going to grind him up kind of like a blender. His doors are going to open again, and body parts and blood, and ripped up flesh is going to come pouring out of his chest at the end. Tony's actually doing the blood, bloody stumps and bloody pieces. I do a lot of the um, whatever effects is needed for someone if they're getting, say, cut in half. This would overlay on top, and this part up here I haven't done it yet. Just kind of uh, be the uh, spinal column, so you get two in one here. You get a lot of good use of uh, texture space. What experience do you have that would qualify you as motion capture talent? Rolling. You can start now. Four motion. They will be unstoppable. This was the acid bath. This is a concept drawing, and uh, basically, I wanted these statues here. They had these uh, churning bowls of acid inside it, and it's kind of like a kind of like a Buddha, but demonized a little or something. It's a close-up, a head study. It would just gush gush out this uh, uh, vomit, this uh, this acid out of their mouth at the end of the round for a fat for a background fatality. It's, it's, it's tedious and trying to limit your geometry and still try to get a lot of detail. Blah. And I don't think he should have these subtle things. It should be like, ah! Making a video game today is almost nothing like when we worked on the first Mortal Kombat in 1991. Mortal Kombat 1 had one programmer, two artists, and a sound designer. That's it. Four guys. Whereas on Deadly Alliance, we have a team of over 50 people. We've been lucky enough to get some of the most talented people in the video game business. And on any given day, it's amazing how many different parts of the game are being worked on at the same time. A lot of what I do involves non-stop bouncing from office to office, checking out character and background designs, as well as all the technical hurdles we have to overcome. There's a lot of issues to deal with in producing this game for three systems simultaneously. So do you want, I mean, Tony said he thinks he could probably do all the characters in a day or two with four levels of damage. But 
Really? Yeah, yeah just, just doing bangs. You think you could do four, four, four all the characters in a day or two? I bet you I could. Oh, I just cut and pasting. Yeah, I cut and pasting scars and stuff. Doing a damage test. Did a beat up. Tried doing a beat up version of Sub Zero and Lee May. We're testing adding damage to players' faces. You can see a sample of the wounding on Sub Zero and another character. Man, that looks like. If you want to see it the bad way, spin it around. Oh, is that? It's, it's like a new texture map for Sub Zero. Yeah. 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 That looks awesome. You know, you know that some of those images actually look better at 128. Because when you have that much data to scramble. Hey. How's that coming? Right now I can give you three levels, uh, Chuck. Your son is clean face. And this is level one, just a few bruises and cuts. Two, I imagine, is the level that you're going to see the most in the game. And oh. then uh, three should be, like, just insane, mm -hmm. just over the top. Just that's Looks good, go. though. Yeah, that's a weird... No, I mean, it, I think it's cool enough that, uh, that it's worth the effort, you know. Brutal. Yeah. You want to launch that? Any uh, let's go get uh, Tony or somebody like that. Good. Mm, hoagie's good. We're doing Lee Mace Fatality, and John needs um, the Maya model. You know, if it can have the texture maps too, that'd be cool. That's okay. Oh, fuck. <laughs> That's even the closest one. Usable? Yeah. Alright, I'll give him the damn when he comes in there. Cool. Thanks. Well, it has digits in it, but that's what I, that's what I'm showing. Right. Right. Let's throw it. Oh. There you go. Look at that. And here's our test your mic problem. Warm-up animations. Go on, Jax. You can do it, Jax. Ah! <laughs> Today's a motion review, and then at the end of it, I'll show you stuff for lighting review, etc. But at any point, feel free to throw any comments out there about anything. Just be aware that I might say, yeah, that hasn't been lit yet, or yeah, we know that. Because I just had my team meeting, and here's an entire list of notes that we had from today's review. The camera motion of the very first shot, mm -hmm. it just seems a little quick. There's no ramp up to it. It just kind of starts speed, and it goes across. I know we need to kind of get there. So maybe we need to just kind of look at that shot against the previous shot and see if it works. There's some kind of problem with your work. Everybody says there's a communication problem. What gives? Dude, I don't even know you anymore. Just kick right away. Okay. But, but, you know, do the, do the, do the, uh, 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 for a good book. <laughs> Carlos is the life of this game. This is, now that I've got, uh, Alternate Shang Tsung, I'm going in on the details and adding stuff like his back emblem right now. And so whatever detail you see, you know, in terms of folds and wrinkles and stuff, is all in the texture. And it'll hide a lot. Let's open up his eyes a little bit and that'll show you. Now basically you can get a lot out of a few polys if you just uh, weigh your vertices right. <laughs> okay, maybe you don't have to, you don't have to Totally lunge out. Gotcha! <laughs> I, can't, I can't do this with these cameras. Here. <laughs> you can't kill me, I'm immortal! For Blind Kenshi's uh, reaction. It's just Kenshi now. Okay, Kenshi. The, the loop does not match uh, like where their starting heads are. So, like, see his head right there? Mm -hmm. And then on the loop, look how far his head snaps back. I had to loop like the last bit of frames in order to make it look right. So I guess we're going to have to figure out a way to go about connecting the uh, each of the coffins with with uh, the amount of money spent. And right, we've got the database which is going to tell us what's in each coffin, how much the coffins cost. Uh, once the player opens a coffin, it has to be marked in the player profile table. So how many coffins are there in this uh, crypt? It's a 26 by 26 array, so there's 676 coffins. That's a lot of coffins. It's acting! <laughs> this is the life, man. This is the life. So how's that motion work for you? Things move so fast during one of our typical days 
that before you know it, the whole day's just blown by. Usually by then we're pretty exhausted, but we know the whole process starts all over again the next day. See you tomorrow, it's seven o'clock.